I think we're going to see Tengu integration uh, within this episode and the next episode. And it may end up being that the Bird Boys are going to be our bridge into... They're going to say, oh yeah... By the way, you know all this really bad stuff with those Dargons here in Tyria, guys? Well, look, you got to see it in Cantha. Like, oh, it's out of control over there. Seriously, you got another 17 dragons. You guys are going to need another five expansion packs to get through all these ones. It's going to take you forever, lads. Seriously, it's unbelievable. That's actually leaked script from episode four, guys. Leaked script from episode four. Five more expansions are confirmed. 17 dragons in the chat. Booba with the dragon. Booba dragon emoji. It's happening, guys. I think it's actually time to have a look at the fresh load of content that has been unleashed upon us, my friends. Let's see what we got here, guys. Let's take a look. It's React content. React content. It was horrific. Whole villages of innocent people just frozen mid-step for hundreds of years to come. Ah! Very dramatic. And... That was actually pretty crazy, guys, okay? Like, you know, if you actually, like, this is one of those things, if you were actually paying attention to those missions, by the way, if you actually paid attention to the missions, it was really messed up. Like, basically, Jormag ice cubes those people, and Ryan was doing this, and to charge Jormag up, and they have to stay in ice cube for ages, like, for actually an insane long time. It was really messed up, true. Ice Brood Saga! Dude, they should put the whole title here. Guild Wars 2, The Ice Brood Saga, Champions, Chapter 3, Balance, right? Like, can they fit that all in there? I don't think they can. New Dragon Response missions! Let's go! Yep. Ooh! Tengu boys! Big boy! Look, they get some mileage out of that guy. They get some serious mileage out of that big boy, you know? The Tengu. Yeah. Notice how they mention the Tengu, but they don't mention any of the other allied factions. Because <laughs> no one cares. Oh, new rewards, yeah. To be fair, pretty good, Chief. Actually, that's a hammer. I thought that was a star, but it's a hammer, I guess. Oh, here they come. Tyria stands together. Ah, the Olmakan are here, too. So the Olmakan are joining, too, in addition to the Tengu. Here we have this mission going down there, guys. Oh, hey, you know, that's interesting, actually. They're not giving that much away, are they? Like, the last one, I think they, I felt like they actually showed a bit more in the last trailer. Ooh, I spoke I'm too soon. Thousands of us have already died because of these Elder Dragons. Yeah, we're gonna have to kill those dragons now. Primordus alive! Dead. And that's Primordus, guys. Check him out. Guild Wars 2. Buy now using my referral link exclamation mark Guild Wars 2 GW2 in the chat. Wow. I mean, that's a, I mean, hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. I mean, that's not my favorite trailer. I, I, it doesn't give away too much. You have this like, I think, I think th this to me implies that it's actually very story focused. I think this is a very story focused release. Because the last one, they actually gave us like a lockdown on what was happening, right? Like, we knew exactly what was going down in the last episode, in my opinion. This, to me, because they're being a little bit, they're being a bit cagey, right? They're not really giving too much away. They're not showing that much. Yeah, Tengu, Dragon Response. They don't really show that much in the drag, there's not a lot of voiceover, there's not a lot of dialogue, right? There's not a lot of this, not a lot of that, right? Like, it, it is very much, very, very much, I think we're going to see big story developments here, because they are not giving much away here. So that's what I get from this trailer, because the previous one, if, if you go back and look at the, the one for chapter two, they, they pretty much lay the entire thing out, right? It's dragons are attacking, fight them off, by the way, Jormag betrays us, who could have possibly seen that coming, right? Like, that was basically the rundown of the story and the trailer. You basically got all of that from the trailer in Chapter 2, um, you know, for that trailer. But with this, honestly, what's going on there? Like, what is actually happening? I don't know. Like, what what, what are we going to find out? What are we, you know, what's Bram going to find out? What are we going to talk about with the Tengu? I actually don't know. We don't really know from this what's happening. From the Chapter 2 one, I knew we knew everything. We literally knew everything. We knew the entire plot of the episode from the trailer. Now, that could be a simple decision from the team that they gave too much away last time and they want to go in a more you know a little bit more mysterious a bit more mystery right um in, in this episode that's also very possible but it, i think to me it gives me a sniff a sniff that we're going to see some very significant story development, in my opinion. Um, with regards to the dragon storyline, probably even some expansion hints. In fact, if you go over here, wait, don't wait, what do they say here? Can't allow 
allow Jormag to take the Dominion of Winds. Yep. Here, let's. We can't allow Jormag to take the Dominion of Winds. We can't allow Jormag to take the Dominion of Winds. Nose emoji in the chat, guys. Right. What does this mean? I actually think we're going to get some pretty interesting expansion insight. It may, maybe, maybe not like big leaks, but I think it's very possible that you get a few little hints, like a few nudges in the right direction, guys, right? A few nudges on what's going to be happening uh, in the in the future of the game, in the future of the storyline as well. I'm kind of building up that, the beginning of that link, the, the Dominion of Winds. Because we have that here with Calamars. The Dominions are involved. The Tengu are going to be involved. They're brought into the mix. They're an allied faction now. So they get to AFK and be useless in either North as well. And they also get to play with us in the, uh, you know, <laughs> they get to play with us in the Dragon Response Vision too. So yeah, I know. It's, um, I think it can be very, very interesting stuff actually uh, with how this is going to go. Um, so yeah, stay tuned. It's coming out next week, guys. Next week. As always, a pretty well-presented trailer. I don't like it as much as the last one, but that's because I thought the last one was really cool. It had loads of slow motion and shit. That was pretty high energy. I was, was high energy, but it is a good trailer. It is good quality. It tells you what's going on there. They've been very clear about what's happening. Now, what's interesting is that they they don't show all the allied factions. They only show the Olmakan. So this is the Al Olmakan allied faction. And this is, you know, that's going to be one of them. And you have the Tengu. So where are the other four? I presume they're actually going to be releasing two on release and then maybe an extra two as time progresses on. So maybe they're not showing all of them here at least, uh, but they will at some point. Uh, I don't know. We will find out. We will actually discover. I, I guess one of them will be like the Silvari people, right? Like as in like the, you know, in the same way that you have like the Lion Guard, you'll have the Silvari I don't know what they're even called, actually. You know, the Silvari guards there, I guess. That can happen. That can indeed happen, guys. So, you know, we can kind of take a look at all this stuff here. You can look at the features. So, we actually knew this was coming. We're having another three dragon response missions. Kaladon Forest, Blood Tide Coast, and Fireheart Rise. Now, these are very, very interesting to me. In fact, actually, very interesting uh, to me. Because we saw a massive uptick in the quality of previous Dragon Response missions. In particular, the Ryland Steelcatcher one in Snowden's Drift was actually very well... It was very well done, actually, in my opinion. Like, some of them were a little long. Um, you know, some of the pre-events. I think Thunderhead Peaks, in particular, the pre-event where you have to clean up all the destroyers. is, is maybe a little too much. But I think that one kind of wear on you after a while. But I've got to say... Dragon response missions, and I never thought I would say this, guys, after the first ones that got out, because to quote Mella, they were some of the worst content ever released in the game, which is absolutely true. Like, the first ones were absolutely some of the worst content that's ever been made in the Guild Wars 2. Um, the second round of dragon response missions was a huge step up. A massive step up, guys. It really, really was. Okay. It's good stuff, guys. It is good, good stuff. Like, the rewards are actually very solid, by the way. If you farm these for gold, you actually get good gold per hour. The rewards are weird, but a lot of rewards are quite weird in the game. It's hard to realize how much gold you're actually getting, but if you convert all the tokens you get into gold, and all the drops you get at the end by doing all the CMs, you actually get decent gold per hour. It's pretty impressive stuff. The boss fights are actually all well designed. The Thunderhead Peaks one is cool. You have like this break bar phase. Uh, you have him moving around a load of the place. There's fire breath. There's eggs you have to kill. Right, all that kind of stuff. That's really good. Ryan has got the multiple phase with spawning the ads. Loads of AoEs to dodge, like knockbacks. He one-shots you. Break bar. Right, these are all really, really solid fights. I like the, the Ice Guy's cool too, actually. Like um, in Lake Doric, the Ice Guy's pretty damn cool as well. So, yeah, like, Dragon Response missions are pretty solid. And we're getting another round here. Let's see where they go if they've actually developed them and pushed them even further. I would like to see the bosses even more intense. Right? I want to see even more intense boss fights. And, of course, probably kind of tune the, uh, kind of like the, the phases of the pre-event, right? Like, uh, make sure that it doesn't take too long to actually get to the boss, right? You know, you want to have like a, you don't want to be killing like mobs for half an hour, right? Well, I mean, it would never be that long, but you don't want to be killing mobs like 10 minutes straight while you're actually trying to fight your way to the boss, I think. Because they can get a bit, particularly on CM, I find that the challenge mode enemies, they are very HP spongy. And it can feel very unresponsive because... The challenge mode basically gives all of them stability, which it can make them feel very unresponsive, right? It's like, oh, you just can't do anything, right? You know, they have they have stab and and you that you can't stop them from attacking you. You mean know, just to kind of like dodge them and like it's it's very like bleh sometimes. But we'll see if they what they've iterated on there. I mean, they iterated significantly last time, so I actually have very high hopes for dragon response missions right there. 
Now, this is interesting. So, they have added, like, this. they haven't done this for a while, actually. So, this uh, is Visions of the Past, kind of. They're not calling it that. But that's what it may be. Players Bram Erson in a solo story mission and uses powers and skills on a journey to seek the meaning of the Owl Spirit's prophecy. So, this is very interesting. I think this could be a really cool lore insight, like, right off the bat. Gameplay, who knows? Now... They actually might do some really creative stuff here, because they've done this before. If you guys remember this, back in Living Story Season 2, I believe, you play as Kaith and basically do the same thing. So I imagine they've kind of dug up that technology somehow, and it's a similar thing to that. So yeah, you go back as Kaith and you, like, sneak around. It's like a stealth mission, like a Metal Gear almost, right? You, like, sneak around in this base uh, and, like, silly, like, pick off and assassinate targets. I think, obviously, it's Braham, and Braham is a guardian, so you won't get that. It will be a different style of puzzle, right? Um, compared to how it used to be, right? It'll be a very different situation. Uh, but actually, that looks pretty cool. Like, you know, I like that they're doing some extra stuff here, getting some extra stuff, like, different types of content. I like it, guys. I like it. Interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. Too similar to the Ryland story after forging steel. I am not sure if that's true because when you when you play with Ryland, you don't you don't play as Ryland, do you? Don't you play? Oh wait, do you play as Ryland or I can't remember? Don't you go alongside him? Like, aren't you like a helper or are you actually Ryland? Oh yeah, no. Oh wait, you are right. I can't remember actually. I can't remember. We're not gonna lie. Like the story stuff, uh, it's um. I, I'm not really super into it, right? Because it's not very gameplay focused. So, it, it, you know, I don't, I don't really, it all kind of blurs together for me. It blurs together. But if that's the case, that's pretty interesting stuff. Four new, I mean, look, like, the, the, the allied factions, okay? Like, the, I mean, uh, th this, this to me is like such a bizarre thing. I, I do not get this at all, by the way. I don't know what, what is ArenaNet? doing with this? I really want to know. Like, because my problem with these allied factions is that they they are irrelevant, right? I have n there's no real law behind them. Uh, there's no real context. You don't see them in the world really. Like, th this to me is like the one thing that makes no sense to me. I mean, it, it, they, they, they just exist in Eye of the North, basically. That's the only impact they have, and they send you on daily quests. This is like the, the, ally, the whole allied faction thing is like so, it's such a nothing, right, to me. It, it just doesn't do anything. There's no like special events or special anything. Like all they do is just AFK there and die in your CM dragon response missions, right? They just die and fall over. But we get some new special action hotkeys and stuff, I guess in the allied faction area, so that's kind of okay, and I mean, I know it's something, I guess, it's something, something happens, and there you go, that is how things go, and yes, like, uh, this is such, this, I mean, this is not a surprise, right, this is not a surprise, um, to me, but they are bringing the Tengu in, right, like, and in fact, uh, well, when we get to the trailer, you'll see a little bit more, um, on the Tengu to an extent here, because the Tengu actually may be more, uh, link to this new mindset. And actually, I strongly suspect they are actually going to start using these episodes as a bridge to Cantha. I think we're going to see Tengu integration uh, within this episode and the next episode. And it may end up being that the Bird Boys are going to be our bridge into. They're going to say, oh yeah. By the way, you know all this really bad stuff with those Dargons here in Tyria, guys? Well, look, you got to see it in Cantha. Like, oh, it's out of control over there. Seriously, you got another 17 dragons. You guys are going to need another five expansion packs to get through all these ones. It's going to take you forever, lad. Seriously, it's unbelievable. That's actually leaked script from episode four, guys. Leaked script from episode four. Five more expansions are confirmed. 17 dragons in the chat. Booba with the dragon. Booba dragon emoji. It's happening, guys. It is happening. Oh, wow. Dude, Arena, they want to enter my fashion contest, apparently, because they've got these new rewards coming in here as well. And yeah, and, and actually, I, I have a, I've got to give this, I've got to give Arena a bit of praise here, actually. Arena, to be fair to them, have actually been doing a really good job with actually outputting rewards that actually exist in the game. In addition to, instead of just having them in the gem store, right? Or having the rules be really lame. Like, Arena's had a bit of a history of, one, gem storing everything. Or two, just releasing crap for the game, basically, that isn't very good. And um, over these past few releases, that has changed, right? That has absolutely changed. They have done a very good job, in my opinion, of releasing these new rewards. 
and you can see them here, and they're continuing uh, along that trend, in my opinion, because that is actually pretty cool. You've got these, uh, you obviously, you've got the jaw mag, or rather, you know, like uh, the, the icy themed weapons to go with like the jaw mag dragon response missions, and you have the primordus set up here with two sylvari of opposing colors uh, to indicate the difference between the two entities. So I think that is actually pretty cool. Uh, you got this kind of fa flaming axe going on here with some decorative stuff there. Same with the shield, and there may even be like a, a more of these weapons, right? There might be like different weapons, different variants, and that you can get. There, you've got a staff over here. This kind of cool icy stuff with a lot of particle that's coming off it, and of course you have the axe and the shield there with some fire on them, some lava, right? It's good stuff. It is good stuff. Interesting stuff, my friends. Interesting stuff here from these gamers. But yeah, uh, there's some other images here as well. And this is probably from Dragon Response Missions. I think this is going to be like a Dragon Response Mission boss by the looks of this guy, I would say. Because we've got this portal in the background. He could be in the story, I suppose. But maybe a DRM. This is from the Braham. Like, Braham has kind of ventured to... Well, I mean, I don't know where he's gone here. Actually, wait, where is this? Um, this, this almost looks a little bit like where Primordus actually kind of like um, emerged from, in a way. Um, if you guys recall where... Ah, it's in Guild Wars 1. Um, it's in Guild Wars 1. It's like the central transfer chamber where you actually fight the... Um, what's it called actually? Like the big one. Like the, the weird destroyer, right? Like the leader of all the destroyers. Like the big ass destroyer. Uh, but there you go. Uh, oh, it could be Draconis Monster as well. Yeah, it looks a bit... Yeah, it could be Draconis Monster as well. Yeah, the Great Destroyer. It looks a bit... Like, yeah, dude, yeah, there you go. Yeah, Draconis Mons, the Great Destroyer area as well. So, it's going to be interesting. He's going to venture around and, and go to back to some old places. I mean, Draconis, Draconis Mons would make way more sense, by the way. Because Arena is making an effort to actually reuse old assets and go back and have a look at this stuff. So, it would actually make sense that they're getting some value out of some of the old living story stuff to kind of show that off to players who might not necessarily have it. And they would then maybe even consider buying it to go check out the rest of that stuff there too. Okay, so then we have this. This is Caladon, right? Yeah, this is Caladon Forest. That's going to be a DRM. Uh, then we have... You know, what is this? Okay, well, I'll tell you exactly what this is. It looks like we're getting some guild hall decorations. In fact, so you'll be able to actually freeze the water in your guild hall and actually kind of cover various areas in jaw mags ice and chill everything down there, which is pretty cool. So if you want to decorate your guild hall, you can now do that. Uh, ooh, that is, that's pretty cool, actually. This is a... What is that, actually? What? Wait, what even is that kind of... Is that like a scepter? It's scepter focus, right? Yeah, it's some kind of scepter focus here. I believe it's a focus there on the offhand, so like scepter and then a focus skin here. I mean, it looks very Aether Blady, very cool actually. This Aether Blady. You know, dude, it, look, what is interesting to me, okay, look, we shouldn't read anything into this, by the way. But yeah, look, look at this, guys. Notice, okay, notice how it, it does look a bit like medium. Now, it isn't medium armor, obviously, but it looks a little bit medium armory, guys. Is NG Scepter Focus confirmed it is leaked guys okay ng scepter focus confirmed but it's not this is a skin uh here comes the weeaboo bait the tengu and actually do you, do you guys know where this is do you recognize this bridge oh yes my friends this is the four winds meme this is the actual place where you see the tengu in guild wars 2 as of now my friends, that is where we are. Yes, it's Caladon Forest, guys, and you are on the Tengu Zone, the Great Wall. Yes, this is this is the Great Wall. You can see the bridge here, here, guys. So we are going to be in direct contact with the entrance to the Tengu lands, my friends. The entrance to the Tengu world. We will defend them, and then they will unleash us into Canther at some point. I mean, like, it is possible. In fact, I think it's very likely. You know what could be very interesting, guys, actually? What if this happens? What if this happens? What if the epilogue, or rather, like, a, a section, like the ending of the Ice Brood Saga is in Dominion of the Four Winds? And the Tengu fly us to Canther. Like, we ride Tengu who flap their wings and fly us to Tengu. That could happen. That could actually happen. I could see that. I could see that. Like, that is plausible to me. Because we need a hook, right? We need a hook to get us into the next dungeon. Because they're going to want... They're going to want to actually... Um, to actually bridge into the next expansion, right? They want to bridge us into the next expansion. So there has to be some kind of way 
to get to Kanda or like have this link to Kanda. We're not just going to, oh, because look, if they do this, which is basically, this is what they basically did with Path of Fire. Let's be honest here, right? You guys remember what they were with Path of Fire? It's like, oh, it's, guys, it's me, it's timey. I've got my, my reading on the meter. We have to go to Ilona now, by the way, right? That's not storytelling, guys. Okay? That isn't storytelling. And they're probably going to try and do a little bit better this time. Not just a mail from Timey over the radio, or whatever it is. We're going to actually have some actual storytelling, maybe, when we get into the next expansion. So, honestly, interesting stuff here. I think this is going to be one of the things that you're definitely going to want to watch out for in the um, in the next uh, in the in the next episode is, is what's going to happen with the Tengu. Keep an eye on that. You've got Tengu going on here again, interacting with the Azura again. Caladon here, I think. Yeah, it's Caladon. You know, actually, you know, this is definitely Caladon. Fun fact, guys. Like, in some of my old videos. Um, the way I would actually green screen stuff out is I would have my character stand up right next to a green wall um, And I would do it in Caldon Forest. So there you go. Kind of a fun fact there. There is a fun fact. Ooh, What a magnificent plumage on this fellow. Nice And then finally this is a giant lighthouse. Now, where is this? This is Blood Tide Coast, right? Yeah, this is Blood Tide Coast. We can see that ship over there uh, and actually, fun fact, guys. This is actually this is this is a bit of a leak here, but I'm gonna un, I'm I'm actually gonna leak this to you now. This is a very interesting thing. Um, so if you data mine in the new client, uh, in the well, not in the, the recent patch, they actually kind of pre-patch these DRMs, kind of ish. Um, and you know what changed? You know what changed, guys? Okay, right? This plank got added to the game, right? That allows you. So we're going on this boat. This boat, we are going to be going on to it. So this is not really elite. This is a data mine, right? Uh, this plank got added to the DAT file. Uh, so yeah, there you go. There's a little uh, little extra detail for you. But yeah, now we know it's true purpose. We know it's true purpose. It will be to get us onto this boat. Or maybe we start... On, we, it's actually possible we start on the boat, maybe. We may actually start on the boat. Uh, and then you kind of go out onto the onto the ice, maybe, or something like that. That's also a possibility there, too. But, yeah. Oh, this is, this is pretty cool, actually. I like this shot. This is a, this is a really nice shot, actually. Um, with this lighthouse here just kind of shining down. You see the snowflakes. You see the ice. And, yeah. And I, I actually think this kind of does confirm that the um, the char we saw here, this guy. Um, hang on. If I go back to this guy. This guy is in the DRM. Because, look, here, guys. See this ice pattern here? See the ice formation? If we go over here now, you notice that that is that ice formation. So there's going to be a portal that spawns here, and there'll probably be a boss or some NPCs that kind of appear here, and you have to deal with them. So yeah, this is actually confirmed. This is a dragon response mission uh, in Blood Tide Coast uh, with this boat involvement. There, guys. There you go, guys. There you go. It is confirmed. Yeah, actually, that would make sense. Plex makes a good point there. We're going to fight the champ here because he's going to spawn around here because that was the same portal. So maybe we start somewhere else. We start elsewhere. Big gaming. And then finally, the final image. Oh, you know, this is the first image. We have some... Uh, it's, it's Bram. Whoa, look at that. There's, a, there's bears. There's a bear. There's a snow leopard. There's a wolf. Nice. Good content there, guys. Good content. Boats are going to be in play, guys. Water is in play. Underwater combat confirmed in Guild Wars 2. But there you go. Those are all the features coming up there. And I've got to say, um, I am impressed. This is coming much sooner than I thought. It's actually going to be the, basically the, uh, the week before my tournament. Or rather, the week of my tournament, in fact. Because my tournament is going to be the 13th, and the 14th, 20th, and 21st. So, coming up very soon. Now, will there be a balance patch? I actually don't think so, guys. Like, for those who are wondering, I don't think there's going to be any balance action whatsoever. Uh, so, yeah, you know, watch out for that. But, you know, outside of that, it will be good. You know, it will still be good. Oh. There you go. Cut your ass about on March 9th. There's three more events to come on March 23rd, April 9th, April 6th, and April 20th. Oh! Oh my, wow. Okay, that is actually very interesting. That is very interesting. Wait, where does it say that, actually? Uh, does it, where, where does it even say that? Uh, oh, oh, yeah. The elusive Tengu may finally be willing to join us. Join a global mo faction mobilization event to recruit your allies for battle on March 9th. With three more events to come on March 23rd, April 6th, and April 20th. This, this, by the way, is actually like a big, big leak, in my opinion. Arena has leaked here, guys. Arena Net has leaked do you guys know what this means yes yeah, see stronlo has a giant brain so he's figured it out this essentially confirms that the final episode is april 27th this confirms it it's confirmed so in basically just about two months from now uh the final episode and the end of the ice brood saga will be out because they said it's going to be april 
Uh, and, you know, if they're running an event of some kind, right, some kind of extra uh, faction mobilization event with four, four, so it's going to be one on the 9th, then on March 23rd, then on April, uh, April 6th, then finally April 20th. If that happens, guys, it essentially confirms that it will be April 27th is when the final episode and the end, the conclusion of the Ice Brood saga will be unleashed. That is a massive leak and a massive confirmation, right? That is very strongly implied by this. So there you go. Dude, we know where it's going to be. We know. I'm sorry, yeah, actually, this is true. Uh, this was pointed out. Um, this was pointed out a while ago as well, too. Like what Khalid is saying here um, is that the, you know, the day of the Tengu is, of course, uh, the 27th. I think this is why they actually, this is why Arena actually brought this date forward, because it is the faction's anniversary, right, on the 28th, and Day of the Tengu on 27th. It's kind of like a little meme celebration thing. So it actually aligns perfectly. In fact, look, guys, I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to go this far. I mean, I mean, we may have to go harder, guys. I think it's actually possible we may even get expansion news on April 27th. Uh, they may actually, in fact, I strongly suspect they'll drop a teaser. Right? Or something like that. At the end of the Ice Brood Saga, there will be a teaser situation. Maybe showing off some elite specializations, showing off some terrain, maybe a few story tidbits there as well. This is going to be big, guys. Look, we are very close. We are getting closer. Expansion is coming. Content is coming. And look, it does make you think. It really does make you think. What are we going to be seeing with the expansion? When is it coming out? If the Ice Brood Saga is over on April 27th, dude, that's the fourth month, right? I mean, it's the end of the fourth month, so it's basically the fifth month, but think about that, guys. When is the expansion coming out? Right? It is very possible that the expansion comes out like three, four months after that. It's possible that we actually see um, the Ice Brood Saga kind of transition to the expansion, and the expansion ends up dropping in, you know, July. Like, if you're very optimistic, June, right? June, July, August, is the, you know, it is now looking like the trajectory. We can see the projectile going up into the air. You can kind of guess where it's going to land based on the trajectory. And who knows, maybe ArenaNet will pull an ArenaNet and it will like swerve up into the air, right, somehow, or explode, right, or like turn into a dragon or turn into Tiny's head, right, while it's in the air. But I think... <laughs> ArenaNet's going to go hard here, guys. ArenaNet is going to go very, very big here. X Pack is coming. Expansion is here. Allied, I mean, oh man, it's going to be painful waiting for April 27th. Ah! Ah, the pain! Ah! Man, I can't wait. I cannot wait. Mark it in your calendar, guys. April 27th is going to be a big day. April 27th is the day of Guild Wars 2. 2021 is the year of Guild Wars 2. I have now confirmed it. It is the year of Guild Wars 2. This is where Guild Wars 2 becomes relevant and not a dead game with zero content. Okay, year of Guild Wars 2 confirmed. <laughs>